being more politically correct doesn't necessarily mean certain stereotypes of white Americans and black Americans have improved. What people are thinking doesn't always reflect what they say, and what people say doesn't always reflect what they do. So if we're going to grapple with the issue of racism in contemporary life, we have to start with that knowledge. I don't know how many of you have ever been accused of being prejudiced at some point in your life. You told a joke and people were horrified, or you made some observation and people presumed you were being racist. If this has happened to you before, almost certainly other people around you panicked. People don't like to be accused of being racist and they go out of their way to demonstrate that they're not. It has become an extremely strong moral norm to be cool about race, and yet in some cases these negative feelings still simmer underneath. So when do these negative feelings actually leak out and become prejudice? Gay Ertner and Davidio in 1986 argued in their theory of aversive racism that most people are motivated to maintain a non-prejudiced self-image. They find racial prejudice aversive and endorse fair treatment of all groups and fear appearing prejudiced. However, many of these people do subconsciously harbour negative feelings toward those from minority groups, and discrimination leaks out in situations where behaviour can be justified as non-prejudiced. In 2000, Davidio and Gertner investigated the change in people's racial prejudice and biases over a 10-year period. Davidio and Gertner asked white college students to assess the credentials of white and black candidates for a job. The actual qualifications for both white and black candidates were the same. However, there were three sets of qualification that differed. The qualifications of both the applicants were either strong, ambiguous or weak. Strong qualifications consisted of information that included being co-captain of the swim team in high school, being a member of the disciplinary board in college, being sensitive, intelligent and relaxed. Ambiguous qualifications consisted of information that included being co-captain of the swim team in high school, being sensitive, intelligent and emotional. Weak qualifications consisted of information that included being co-captain of the chess team in high school, being independent, forthright and intense. Consistent with other research, Davidio and Gertner found that general self-reports of prejudice were lower in 1998 when compared to reports from 10 years prior. However, in both time periods, white participants did not favour the white candidate when both candidates' qualifications were clearly strong or weak. In fact, participants actually viewed the black candidate more favourably than the white candidate when their credentials were very strong or very weak. However, participants were more likely to recommend the white candidate for the job when the candidate's qualifications were ambiguous. In line with the theory of aversive racism, it seems that although self-reports of racial prejudice may have declined over the years, it's possible that there's still subtle manifestations of racial bias. Therefore, it seems that in situations of uncertainty, people are less likely to give the minority group members the benefit of the doubt.